Let's continue with Code Dive 2021. Our next speaker is Andrzej Krzemieński. Andrzej is our veteran speaker and has a lot to say about the history of Code Dive. He hasn't missed even one edition. Each time he has a new fascinating topic and today he won't disappoint. Andrzej has been a software developer since 2004. He works mainly with C++ in commercial software, which includes safety-related and high-performance systems. He's a member of the C++ Standards Committee and a Boost developer. He's also a co-organizer of C++ user group Kraków. For years, he's written his blog on C++, akshemi1.wordpress.com. So, today, Remarkable library. Andrzej, your turn. Hi, everyone. My name is Andrzej Krzemieński. I work for Sabre Polska. I'm also a Boost developer. And today I'm going to talk to you about a remarkable library which solves a similar problem as uh, std optional, but in a different way. So, why do we use std optional? This is in order not to use uh, magical values like minus one for integers. It, would, it works to some extent, but it's too easy to confuse a missing value with a proper value and treat it as a int, whereas we don't have any int value yet. So uh, std optional is able to reflect that clearly in a, in a type system. We get a different type, and then if, you, you wanna, if you, we even want to use it as int, it will not compile. But we pay a price for it because uh, uh, our optional ints are twice the size of regular ints. And this is because of how uh, uh, optional is implemented. In order to be store any int plus not an int, apart from the storage for int, we have to store additional uh, one bit flag for representing the, the, the fact that we have or don't have a value. You cannot store single bits in C++, so we have to use one byte. And then there is alignment requirements. So in struct, when we put members, we have to align it to the smallest or biggest scalar type, which is int in our case. And our one bit is aligned to a full, uh, is padded with a, to a size of a full integer and hence we get the size of two integers. In contrast, markable doesn't have this problem. If you create markable type, uh, you can store uh, optional ints, and each optional int has the size uh, of an int. What this declaration means is that markable is a class template. You have to provide it a mark value policy, which is mark int in this case, you have to tell it what type will be stored inside for, uh, and what uh, value will be used to as this magical value. So it's basically the same as with regular ints, except now it's uh, hidden behind the interface of Markable. And in this example, uh, uh, never mind that, we have a two interfaces actually, or a dual interface for uh, markable ints. One is where we speak about value. So we have value type, we can assign a value, we can check if a optional int has a value, and if it does, we can access this value. And this access has a narrow contract, so if we do it without having a value, an assertion will fire. In contrast, we have uh, the other Re representation interface where you can access the, the underlying type directly. So you have the representation type, you can assign this representation, or you can get the representation value, and this time there is no precondition. So even if it's this minus one, you can just have it. And it's very convenient if you need to marshal or unmarshal uh, this uh, option, this markable ints, because then you can just get it and send it out and just unpack it on the other side, which is faster and it's a simpler code. And in case of int, both the value and the presentation is the same type, but in a general case, this is not necessarily so. For instance, you can you have another policy for marking enumerations. 
and in this case the value type is the enumeration but the representation type is the underlying type of the enumeration which will be int or int like type and then you can use for instance minus one to represent a missing enum or in case of a marked bool the logical value is bool but the representation value is a character where zero means false one means true and two means a missing value and this is why i can store markable bools in one byte as opposed to optional which needs two if you need to store a string you will have to write your own policy where logical value will be string and the representation value will also be string and the special value will be like two consecutive numeric zeros if you need to define your own policy you derive from a markable type uh, a template which gives you all the type devs like representation type value type and you have to say how to build a special value using the static member function mark value and how you determine if what you store is a, a magical value and another static function for this is is marked value now you pass it as a policy to a markable template and it works like you can check if you have a value or not and note that i use the full name has value because I do, you do not have this implicit conversion to bool and this is for a reason Stood optional converts to bool to tell you whether you have value or not but what does it mean if you store an optional bool like here which of those three uh, checks here actually check if you have a uh, optional bool stood optional comes with a good answer to this question but the practice shows that one third of the programmers will get it wrong so instead we give you no implicit conversions you have to make an uh, explicit function call another gotcha with optional is that you can less than compare two optional ints and it is not clear what it means for a missing int to be less than say minus one like in case of ints we intuitively know that we mean the magnitudes so you know that if you have one int and you add one you get a greater magnitude but there is no notion of magnitude or adding one for optional ints so it's not clear what that means so why does optional even provide this less than comparison and the answer is uh, to be able to conveniently store those in sets and other tree-based containers and for this use case you don't need any particular sorting order as long as the empty optional is a different value than any other uh, than any other value of uh, t so maybe optional could specialize to less instead of providing the operator but it's not clear if it's a good solution because it's not clear what std less is for does it mean what you use in std set or does it is it a graphical representation of operator less than or name for operator less than. and also it doesn't works doesn't work when you use tuple of optionals because whereas the operator propagates through tuples std less does not so maybe the optional has made the right choice but the downside of it compared with the ability to convert from int to optional int is that you get a for free a comparison between int and optional int you can use it by accident maybe you, you don't even know that you are using it but the uh, result is usually not what you would expect this is why markable by default doesn't come with any ordering operators so if you want to check you create your uh, markable int or optional int with markable and check it with a c++ concept like equality comparable it's not comparable period however what you can do instead is to opt in into ordering markables you use a second policy so the first policy is the mark value and the other policy is ordering 
and you teach the markable how to uh, how two markables are compared. One such ordering policy that comes with the library is order by value, and it means uh, markable ints will be ordered lexicographically so that the missing value is the least of all values and then come all the other values. This is what stood optional actually does. So this would make markable uh, compatible with uh, stood optional, except that you don't have one value that you use for uh, marking empty, empty uh, markable ints. Another policy that you could use is order by representation. This just compares the representations. And this is f uh, way faster. Because to implement this one, the order by value, I have to use at least two branches. Whereas here, there is no branch involved. So it just works faster. It beats uh, std optionals comparison. It's as fast as comparing row ints. You get equality comparison with it, less than comparison, and the specializations of, of std hash. If this is the, the the policies that come with the library are not enough, you can define your own by providing a, a policy class which has these two static member functions, equal and less. Or you can just define the equal if you are interested in equality comparisons, but not less than comparisons. But an even better option, if you can afford it, is not to make your markables comparable, but instead in sets use a predicate that comes with library, like less by value or less by representation. This way you are being very explicit and you are avoiding any uh, miscommunications or misunderstandings. Similarly, for another uh, con uh, containers, you have hash by value and hash by representation. The last thing I want to show you is uh, uh, the dual storage. And this is the ability, ability to store efficiently classes with invariants. Here is an example. I have an interval, which is represented by the lower bound and the upper bound. And there is an obvious invariant here that low cannot ever be greater than high. And I enforce this invariant in the constructor with, using this assert. So if you pa pass me both values, the assertion will fire. There is a natural way to represent markable type efficiently, the, the special value, and this is where low is greater than high because it never can represent an interval. So we, we have a perfect uh, spare value to use. But we cannot create this value because if we try it, our assertion will fire. So the way to approach this is to create a sibling type which has the same layout of members, but it has no invariant. It's just regular struct with public access to, to all the members. And if we have this sibling type, we can create a union that stores either the value or its sibling value. And because it's a union, with its size is still the size of a value. And then if we want to store empty value, we just assign this uh, zero and minus one, so the low greater than high, into the member representation. And then we can check the representation if it is this special value. And if you want to store, store a real value, we assign to member value. And if you want to check if we are storing the value, we again read uh, this other member representation. And we can determine from the representation if it is this uh, marked value. And you could ask if it's safe. And the answer is, since C++20, this is safe. Because C++20 gives us a really nice feature, often neglected. It is a, a type trait, is layout compatible, uh, is layout compatible, sorry. And this answers exactly this question. Is it safe to do this type panning tricks with unions? <laughs> On those, on those two types. So it either works safely or it doesn't compile. In either way, we are not risking any bugs. But 
uh, and uh, how is it used. Now, in, to, in order to implement the has value, I just read the representation member. It's always safe to do it, whichever of value versus representation we stored. And if we need to access the value, we know we already know it's there, we access the other member value and we're done. And the users do not really have to bother with unions because it's all hidden under the interface. The only thing you have to do is to, when you define your own uh, mark policy, derive from this markable dual storage type. It's a curiously recurring template pattern, so you have to repeat it again. Then give me the your type, your sibling type, and just uh, tell me how to create uh, the special value in the sibling type and how to detect the special value as we said before, and we are done. Now you can just pass this as a policy to Markable template, and it just works. So to compare uh, Markable with Optional. Optional is good for interfaces. It will just work for any T, whereas Markable is good for implementation details and probably only on the hot paths, because there is a, a learning cost associated with using markables because you have to always define this thing and define the policy so you will probably need a type def somewhere it will it is more declarations it requires you to customize things whereas optional doesn't require you to customize anything it, you just give me the t and it works it's not free it's very good uh, uh, vocabulary type and it works for any t Whereas Markable requires that your T has a value to spare. It's easy to create an optional optional T, but you may not be able to create Markable Markable T, even if you were able to create Markable T, because you may have run out of spare values. But instead, what you get is uh, efficiency, measured both in time and space. Markable, uh, Markable library is available under Boost uh, software license uh, in GitHub. This is the URL. I encourage you to try it and provide me feedback and I hope uh, you will find it useful. Thanks for listening and if there is any questions, I am now ready to answer them. Andrzej, thank you so much. And my suspicion is that you're already thinking about your next Code Dive talk but let's find out in 2022. Anyway, don't forget about our virtual escape room. Check our website right after the conference. Hack Dive is waiting. So the challenge, once again, it will start soon after the conference on our website. And we have some prizes. So the winner is going to get a laptop a monitor for the second place, and there are three sets of wireless headphones for three people, those who come in third.